Good morning, Kahal Kadosh. Berochim Abayim to everybody. Today, Wednesday, the 11th day of Elul, corresponding to the 7th of uh, September 2022. Today's class, graciously sponsored by the Sultan family, Le'elul Nishmat, their beloved father, Moshe Ben Adel Alava Shalom. Additionally, today's class, graciously sponsored by Eli and Sarah Levy, Le'elul Nishmat, her beloved grandmother, Yafa Bar Esther Weintrop Alea Shalom. Additionally, today's class sponsored by the Franco family, Le'elui Nishmat, their beloved uncle, Yaakov Ben Rahel Alea Shalom. And today's class also dedicated Le'elui Nishmat, Perla Mafoda Batfreha, beloved mother of Mr. David Trien, with us today, uh, on the day of today being the day of her uh, Askara Iratzonda to the words of Torah. All the Neshamot have an Aliyah in Gan Eden. Amen. Today we're going to uh, catch up for the missing class of yesterday, connecting to the 10th day of Elul on the powerful message of Tomer Devorah. For those that have been following this class since the beginning of Rosh Chodesh Elul, as we do year after year, we learn for the first nine chapters the different tactics that a person hello that a person it's an issue with the wi-fi i think that a person needs to activate throughout life in order to imitate hashem thank you very much to imitate hashem in the best of our abilities at the end of the day this was the opening statement of Revi Moshe Cordovero, writing line one, page one, chapter one, that a person must emulate Hashem to the best of their abilities. The Revi Moshe Cordovero, in the past nine chapters, every day gave us tactics and suggestions. Now we're going to go to plan B. How do I activate whatever we learn? Let me scan quickly. We learn the importance of tolerance, sablanut. We learn the importance of patience. We learn the importance of concentrating on the good and ignoring the negative. We concentrate on always looking at people behind Tova, always looking at people in a positive set of eyes, not concentrating on the negative, but concentrating on the positive. All this sounds beautiful. But the question is, how do I do that? Right, how do I activate all these missions? Everything sounds good. And I'll tell you a secret. This is suitable for every human being, not only for Yehudim, even for Gentiles, who cannot benefit from being positive, who cannot benefit from having a bit more patience and a bit more tolerance. But the question is, how do I modify my personality, maybe my personality is completely the opposite. I hope my personality is not explosive, Baruch Hashem. But there are people that have a short fuse, right? There are people who they have zero tolerance or they have zero patience. And there are people who don't know what does it mean concentrate on the good. They always look at the cup is half empty instead of saying the cup is half full. So the question is, my cup is 98% full. Thank you. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu, Melech HaOlam, Sheakol Nihiyah Bit Baruch. Amen. So, the Bim Moshe Cordovero says the following. A lot of the things, thank you so much, a lot of the things that we are mentioning it has to do with the mindset of the person. In other words, even though the human body has different aspects of the physical life, but at the end of the day, let's be honest. Who are the two most important components of the human body? I think we all agree, the brain and the heart. Hazaku Baruch Hacham Clemente, okay? The, the brain and the heart. So it says Rabbi Moshe Cordovero 
that even though the brain and the heart have this power, but there is one key component which has to do with the mindset of the person. How many times we say, it's all in your mind? We don't say it's all in your stomach, it's all in your heart, it's all in your hand. What do we say? It's all in your mind. So that's what the Bimoshe Cordovero is gonna be targeting now. The brain and the mind of the person. And it says, there is one, I'm giving you the short version. And it says, there is no, or there is no matter, and there is no aspect of patience and humility like God. Now, patience, we already learned this, that despite the fact that a person may not behave or act in a proper way, yet Hashem lets the person live and enjoy life and have beracha in the life, even though the current actions may make the person not a worthy recipient. But if you remember on today's Wednesday, Monday's class we mentioned Zehut Avot, the merit of the parents, the merit of the grandparents, the merits going all the way to Abraham, Ishaq, and Yaakov. Because the moment that we feel a sense of entitlement or deserving, that's where troubles begin. Now, number one. Number two, Rahamim, Hashem's mercy. Pasuk in Tehillim that says, Berahamab al kol ma'asab. Hashem's compassion is not only to humans because we are the highest level of creation. Hashem's compassion is on animals too. For example, the dog. You know that the dog doesn't need to eat but once every three days? Obviously, dogs today for Purina and pet food and Petcom, you know, they have a lot of incentives and they have like a supermarket for humans, they have a supermarket for pets. But the food in the stomach of the dog can take up to three days to digest. And this is out of the chesed of Akadosh Baruch Hu, That he doesn't have to worry running after food. Again, I don't know other animals who have this faculty. Camel. The camel, okay? <clears throat> okay? Ten days. Every 10 days, Hazako Baruch, the ant, that is able to carry more food that she can actually afford to have of its own weight. So there are many matters that have, and yet it says to be Moshe Cordovero that Hashem is <coughs> humble as well. And one of the most famous Pesukim in the Torah that talks about Hashem's humility, besides uh, the Gemara that we learned the other day, concerning Moshe Rabbeinu and Betzalel, it's about the creation of the world. The Pasuk writes in the creation of the world, Na'ase adam kesalmenu kidmutenu. In English it means, let us make man in our format and in our image. Rashi asks a question, why does God need to speak on a plural manner? Let us make men in our format, in our image. What God needs to consult? Rashi says that from this pasuk you learn the anava, the humility of Hashem. Even though he did not have to ask anything to the Malachim, yet God says, why should I make my own decision? Let me consult Rashi, Sefer Bereshit, Perasha Bereshit, right before the creation of Adam. That's what Rashi says. That's why, fast forward 2,000 years later, no, 4,000 years later, give or take, when it came, the Gemara that tells us that the king of Alexandria, Egypt, Plotemy, the king, summoned the 72 Hachamim to translate the Torah into Greek for the first time in history that the Torah was going to be translated into a foreign language, 
And the miracle was that the 72 translations, it was like you took the book, you put 72 in the copy machine, and every single translation was exact. There were 10 changes that the hachamim made. And you have to understand, they did not have WhatsApp, copy and paste. There was no communication. One of the changes was, besides Bereshit, was Naase Adam. When the Pasuk says, Naase Adam besalmenu kidmuteno, which in English means, let us, listen to the English, let us make men in our format, in our image. You know what they wrote? E I say Adam, I shall make men besalmi bekidmuti, in my format, in, uh, in my image. They switch in Bereshit also. In Bereshit, instead of writing Bereshit bara Elokim, they wrote Elokim bara Bereshit because they were afraid that people may misunderstand and say that the word Bereshit means somebody's name. Bereshit bara Elokim. Somebody named Bereshit created God. Has Shalom. So they reverse. The reason why the Torah begins with Bereshit is because the Bet of Beracha instead of the Aleph of Arur, bed of blessing, Aleph means a curse. So therefore, the Torah began with a bed. <coughs> Excuse me. So it goes to Moshe Cordovero, and it says that in order for a person to change, there is one item which is not negotiable. And this word, it says, it's called Anava. Anava means what? Humble. Humility, right? Being humble. If I'm humble, I'm willing to listen, I'm willing to recognize my mistakes, and hopefully I will be willing to change. But instead of having humility, I have arrogance. I am an arrogant person. Or a big shot. I have holiness, or huyo. So then, somebody that has ga'ava, how can you change? Ga'ava personality means you are wrong and I'm right. You don't know what you're talking about, I know it all. So if I have, God forbid, that type of personality, how can suddenly become tolerant? And how can I suddenly become patient? How can I concentrate only on the good? The opposite. Arrogance, ga'ava, is the opposite of good. If anava is humility, and humility, according to what we are learning now, it says the midat ha'anava. It says why? Because through humility, a person can shape or reshape their life. Because humility means, you know what? You're right, I made a mistake. I'd like to apologize. I made a mistake. Please forgive me. I made a mistake. You're right. I should have been more sensitive, etc. I only bring in fictitious scenarios of what does it mean to be humble. Many, many times people argue, not because they are right, because they argue because intellectually, they cannot afford to lose. You understand? It's like it happens sometimes in Shalom Bay, in the relationship between husband and wife, or even with partners, I mean partners in the way of business, or in every relationship that sometimes, I know that you're right, but you're not gonna have the final word. I need to have the final word. That's Ga'ava. That's Hazakobayu. That's a son of Ga'ava. And there are forces to be Moshe Cordovero, if you want to learn how to become more patient, more tolerant, more understanding, more positive, you need to change your engine. You need a new engine in your brain. Not a brain transplant. You need to upgrade your engine. You know how many times, you know, you go to the mechanic and they tell you, just change the engine. This is not so easy to change the engine of the brain. It's not easy because it's required, rule number one, humility. 
Because once I recognize the need to change, I'm in the right direction. And by the way, one of the things that we mentioned in the first few chapters is that part of Hashem's rahamin, kindness and compassion upon the person is that the person doesn't need to deliver on their commitment. Let's say that I said, you know what? I need to change. Now, in the world of business, let's say that you have a feud or a situation with someone, someone that is not paying you on time, and now is asking you for a credit line increase. Are you going to give it to him or not? Most likely you will say, no, show me good faith, pay me. Okay, you say that you're going to pay me on time. Okay, show me how you pay me on time. Pay me every week, let's say, $500. Okay. If you are able to keep it up, I come to your way. That's a beautiful way of doing business. But with Hashem, God doesn't need me to make my first payment. God says, you recognize the need to change, I'm okay with you. And that's something which is not human. You can call it pay in advance. Obviously, don't abuse the system. Don't take advantage of the system. To say, I'm going to change, and we don't change, that's not good neither. The idea is that the commitment, it, it, it's going to be followed by a change of action. It's like we discuss also in one of the chapters about anger. Hashem is a God's anger. Okay? Rega be'apo. The Pasuk says in the book of Tehillim, that Hashem's anger or disappointment against the person has a limited lifespan, an instant. Now, we don't know really what the word instant means in this Pasuk. Does it mean an instant of human world life or in an instant of God? If it's human life instant, that's great. But if it's a godly instant, that could mean maybe 27 years, okay? But hopefully it will not do, it will not be so. Actually, according to the Torah, the Basuk writes, Lo You know, when it comes to godly matters, yes, they are heavenly matters, but they are earthly matters. And earthly matters is like the Gemara writes and it says, Yesh din lemata, and din lemada. The Gemara writes in Masechet Makot, and it says, when people settle their disputes in the physical world, God does not get involved. In other words, let's say that two people have a financial disagreement, and we settle, we make a settlement, and maybe the settlement uh, wasn't done a thousand percent the proper way. God says, if you settle between both of you, I don't get involved. Because if God gets involved, it's no longer called a settlement. It's called judgment. And you don't want judgment. You want settlement. I want to settle. I don't want to judge. Because judgment means activating judgment against the person. Now, comes Rabbi Moshe Cordovero, and it says, God is the feeder of the world. God feeds the lies, kinim. How big is a lies? Lies in Spanish means piojo. How big is a lies? Invisible. I ever heard that the lies gets pregnant? <laughs> Don't ask me how. The egg, the eggs. Or maybe it doesn't get pregnant. Maybe the eyes lay, lays egg. I understand a chicken, a hen. But it lies something yani, invisible. Remember in school, they tell you use a special uh, lice brush and use shampoo and check your hair for lice. 
pero sí. Ok, they still do it? Yeah. yeah. They, they still do it. Every time Ok. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, very good. So imagine yourself or carne remim. What you say? The horns of an animal called reem. Reem. There is a story that happened with David and Melech. Hoshiani mi pi arie u mi carne reem anitani. It says that David Amele, in one of his runs, went and took a nap or took a sleep in a mountain. Suddenly, David Amele wakes up and it sees that the mountain is moving. It sees that the mountain is moving. David Amele says, Uli, a mountain that is moving? What was it? David Amele climbed a mountain, believing that it was a mountain but it actually was this animal called Re'em. So David Amelech prays to Akadosh Baruch Hu. It says, God, how do I get out? I'm afraid. What did God do? God sent the lion that crossed the pathway of this Re'em. This Re'em, out of the respect to the lion, which is the king of the jungle, stopped, lowered himself to the lion, and David Amelech was able to escape. But now David Amelech says, I was able to escape the Re'em animal, but I also need an escape route for the lion. And that's what King David says in the book of Tehillim. Hoshi'eni mi pi arieh, save me from the mouth of the lion, o mi karne re'im anitani. Like you answer me from the horn of the Re'em. So says Rabbi Moshe Cordovero, how much, how much does R.E.M. needs to eat? I don't know. A lot. If it's one of the biggest behemoth of the world, I don't even know which animal will be today. Okay, but let's imagine something very big. I'm not referring to an elephant or a giraffe or a camel. Something heavy, literally. And it says, Ve'eno mebaze shumberia. God could have said, why should I spend my godly powers in feeding an animal? It's an animal. Big deal. It says, no, because the fact that it's created, it means that it has a godly component. And that's why it says, Sheilo yebazea beruim. It says, because if God will have this feeling of disgust, to the creations because their apparent insignificant type of purpose in the world, that creation will be instinct from the world. Unbelievable. God supervises and showers with compassion to everyone. So therefore, it says to be Moshe Cordovero into the human interaction. It says, always try to do good. Try to do what's right. And it says, never discount any person. Even the simplest person that you may ask, What's the purpose of this person in the world? Perhaps it crosses our mind. But you know what, says Rabbi Moshe Cordovero, since when you need to understand God's plan in the world? It's like I read a cute sign a long time ago. The day that a person is born in the world is God saying, I need you in the world. I have a mission for you. And the moment that a person, God forbid, leaves the world, God says, thank you for your services. I need you back next to me. Powerful. Powerful. Because both of them talks about how God relates to the person. And therefore it says, even on someone that may be kalot sheba kalot, yani. I don't want to say what I'm going to say, but I'm going to say it because I think it makes sense. 
it says, you are a waste of a human being. Can you relate to that? That's very heavy to say. But Rabbi Moshe Cordovero says, how can you have the audacity of saying something like that when God has a plan for this person? Now, that doesn't mean that because the person says, oh, God has a plan for me, I'm okay. No, God may have a plan for you and you're not okay. And that's what he's trying to say here. It says, but at least it says, try always to do the best that you can. And the way he mentioned in the early days, and it says, and if you see someone who needs help, maybe the best way to help the person is to pray for them. You're not going to change the person. You don't have the means to support the person. But one thing that we say, it says Rimo Moshe Cordovero, pray for the person. It's like we mentioned in the early days of Elul, mentioned by Rabbeinu Ha'ari and the Mo'ed Kol Hai and others, that during the month of Elul till Kippur, although praying for Teshuvah any day of the year is good, but these 40 days, it's a very powerful prayer because at the end of the day, like Mohit Kolhai says, we all have someone that can utilize a spiritual boost of energy. Sure. Sometimes could be a relative, sometimes could be a friend, sometimes could be an acquaintance, someone that we know that is going through spiritual hiccups or spiritual situations, and we pray. And by praying for them, says Rabbi Moshe, says Rabbi Haim Palachi, that Borea Kori Rabbeinu Ha'ari, that Borea Olam takes that prayer and injects it into the neshama of the person that we pray for. And he says one more thing. Don't tell the person that you are praying for them. <clears throat> Let's say you're praying for your cousin, right? Don't say to your cousin, by the way, you are in my prayers. No. That's a recipe for disaster. Just pray for them. And it says, You'll see miracles. Because you need the ultimate hesse to a person. Reactivating the neshava. So the question is, okay, now I understand. I need to have humility to recognize the need to change. But how do I do that? Do I go to Whole Foods? and give me 500 milligrams of anava, <laughs> give me a thousand milligrams of patience and tolerance, I wish would be so easy. <laughs> Although they have stuff to calm you down there, you can imagine, right? So it says an interesting concept, today's chapter, Mahashava. <laughs> You're thinking. It says, first of all, constantly, it says, Constantly, tamid lahashor mahashagot tobot. Always think good. I'm not saying that it's automatic, but it's easy. But if you remember, there was a great rabbi that said, tahshov tov, tov. Think good, it will be good. Not only that, not only that. Be'ara lo ikanes ba. Don't allow negative thoughts to enter your brain. Why not? It says very simple. Because positive thinking attracts compassion. Negative thinking attracts negativity and hardship. Powerful. And it says, the more you think in a positive way, difficulties they start to disappear. Because if you look at things in a good way, that thought alone, says Rabbi Moshe Cordovero, it activates Rahamim Gemurim. It activates compassion. This was what made, which is going to be coming up soon, uh, in a few days, Nahomish Gamzu, the famous teacher of Rabbi Akiva. There was a fellow, let's call him in English, Mr. Goodman. Gamzu Letoba. 
Mr. Goodman, anything that happened was for good. They killed his animals, good reason. He lost money, good reason. Something happened, something's body that was at the end, something good. In other words, the, the rabbi, he did not live a simple life. He lived a very challenging life, a very difficult life at many levels. So they ask him, how can you survive when you, you lost the leg? So you know what he answered? I may have lost the leg, but I still have my eyes. It's not so automatic that a person thinks and speaks this way. It didn't happen overnight. So powerful was this statement that this is how he's known in the Talmud. Nahum Ishgamzu. That was the nickname they gave him, Mr. Goodman. In English, it would be Mr. Goodman, because for him, everything was good. So it says, now, the more you see good, the more you attract good. It's an automatic reaction. So you can change the... The negative for the good. Yeah. Of course. But if somebody is doing something bad to you... Okay, so listen to chapter 2, 3, and 4, that it says, even if somebody did something bad to you, do you think that he did it out of his own heart? Or God sent them to do something and he happens to be the culprit to do it? Yes, it's not easy what I'm saying. Thank you for your service. More or less, but what happened? We mentioned, we mentioned David Amelech. In one of the classes, we mentioned how Shimei ben Gera came out and cursed King David. And King David, by Torah law, he was allowed to execute him. Because the halacha is that a person who insults the king the king cannot ignore the insult because insulting the king is insulting God. And one of his soldiers, Abishai ben Seruya, wanted to kill Shimei ben Gera on the spot. And, Shimei, and, and uh, 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 Abishai ben Seruya, by the way, he was such a skilled soldier that he knew how to penetrate the sword between the ribs of the enemy and puncture the heart on the spot without the enemy realizing. I'm only describing the, 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 the power of this great soldier. But King David says, why are you going to attack him? God told him to curse me. So if God is cursing me through him, means that I need to do Teshuvah. But remember, the outcome of the reaction of David, or perhaps the lack of reaction of David, because David did not kill Shimei ben Gerah that day, later on, Mordechai as Sadiq was born. If David kills Shimei ben Gerah that day, forget about the miracle of Purim. That's why the Megillah Esther says, about Shaul Amelech, Mordechai, Ben Yair, Ben Shimei, Ben Kish, Ish Yemini. Mordechai was a direct descendant of Binyamin. Shimei Ben Gera and Shaul Amelech. So imagine if David kills Shimei Ben Gera. Forget about Shaul, forget about Purim. The the, the self-control of David activated that. But imagine yourself, if instead of saying, God is sending me a message through him, like marriage, by the way. You need to know this. I hope my wife is not listening. <laughs> like in marriage. Yeah. When the wife says something to the husband, often means that God is sending the husband the message through the wife. The wife suddenly becomes the mouthpiece of God, the speaker of God. I know that many of us as men, 
don't like to hear that, and I hope the wonderful ladies will not take advantage. The rabbi said that when I speak, God is speaking. Relax. Sometimes, yes, sometimes could be the attitudes. Okay? Okay? So it says, it says, Moshe Cordovero, therefore it says, always protect your castle. Your castle, says Rebbe Moshe Cordovero, is your brain. Loikanes zar. Don't allow an invasion to penetrate your fortress. Who are the invaders? Those that want to minimize the positive thinking of the brain. And he brings a proof from the Sefer Ereshit Chokhmah. So it says the person must always put pure thoughts and holy thoughts in their mind. That's why the Gemara writes, Irhure Avera, Kashim Me Avera. A forbidden thought is worse than a forbidden action. The question is, how come? Short answer, because a forbidden or a negative thought infest the brain. And if the brain is infested, the side effects lingers for times. And it affects the prayers of the person and the learning of the person. That's the reason why he says, make sure that the tenants and the residents of your brain are Mr. Goodman, Mr. Holliman, <laughs> faith in Hashem, words of Torah, words of prayers, and positive thinking. These are your full-time residents of your brain. Once the brain has that kind of control in a good way in our inner aspect of life, then the ambassadors that the brain sends to the mind and to the heart, which is the emotions of the person, will be catalog cataloged through the power of positive thinking and positive reinforcement. Imagine yourself that you have to say something to someone. You can say it in a positive way and you can say it in a negative way. I will deliver the same message, but the question is, I'm doing it to the good side or the negative side? What's the outcome difference? If I say it in a negative way, you will remember the negative message. If I say it in a positive way, it gives you reinforcement. It gives you hizuk. It gives you the, 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 the positive message that perhaps the person needed in order to reactivate or to give a boost to their neshama. Deep but practical. This is in part what our holy rabbis tell us, the Abodah of Elul. Tomorrow, God willing, we'll discuss parts of the human body, starting with the forehead, connected to anger, and then to the eye, positive seeing, negative seeing, mal de ojo, ayin tova, ayin ra'a. Stay tuned. And by Ezzet Hashem, it will continue that willing tomorrow morning uh, via itorah.com. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen. 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 That's a Kaddish. I will do Ashkava after the class. Rabbi Hananiah bin Akashi Omer. That's a Kaddish Baruch Hu. Lezakot et Israel Lefiha. Irba Lahen Torah Mizmot Shene Emar. Adonai Hafez Lema'an Sitko. Yadil Torah.